and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and today we're going to be taking a look at a Sew Sampler Box exclusive pattern. You all have been asking for us to do tutorials and we are going to do one today. This is the Haberdashery Table Runner pattern. We received this in a Fat Quarter Shop Sew Sampler Box a few months ago and I am absolutely in love. My husband and I are avid tea drinkers. We do a lot of summer tea parties, and this is going to look absolutely adorable on our table. So the fabric we're going to use today is the line Wonderland by Rifle Paper Company, and this is a cotton and steel collection. You actually just need um, fat eights, which is great and cost effective. This table runner is super simple to make and it's actually pretty large so it's more of a table cover. So why don't you come in a little closer and we'll take a look at the materials that you'll need for this project. The Sew Sampler Box Exclusive Pattern. This is Haberdashery Table Runner. This is Fat Eighth Friendly. It is from Fat Quarter Shop. This is absolutely adorable. It's, it is going to turn out so cute. I just know it. This works really, really well with the Wonderland fabric from Rifle Paper Company, and it is a cotton and steel. So like I said, it's fat eighth friendly, so you just need one fat eighth bundle. The other ones you'll need are on the back of your pattern, so you'll need um, one and two third yard of a background fabric. We chose a really beautiful white with gray polka dots, very muted, and it really accentuates the fabric nicely. The next thing you'll need is 5 eighths yard of binding and two full yards of um, a backing. Now you think two yards for a table runner, I thought that was a lot, but you do actually need every bit of two yards of backing for this project. Like I said, it does make a pretty large table runner. If you had a small table or even if it were to go on my desk in my sewing studio, it would actually be a table cover. So let's dive on into this project and take it one stitch at a time. Using the pattern's instructions, I have cut out all of my fabrics and labeled them A, B, C, and D. And you'll see in the actual pattern, they are labeled A, B, C, D, and then our binding is E. I got these little alphabetties in a sew sampler box from Fat Quarter Shop. They come in blue and pink and they are essential in my quilting studio. I'm a homeschool mom of three boys and so I often will cut fabric and walk away, come back and cut fabric and then walk away again. And so these just help me keep really organized when I'm kind of shelving projects for the time being. So for our first step, we're actually only gonna use fabric C and D and so I'll scoot the rest out of the way. With these, you'll choose one of your fabric D rectangles. I'll scoot the other ones away. I absolutely love these little teapots. Um, in our home, we are huge tea people, and so these work out perfectly. You're going to take four fabric C squares for one fabric D rectangle. What you're going to do is with right sides facing together, you're going to put this in all four corners. And you're going to sew from outside corner to outside corner. Then after that, you'll cut a quarter inch on the outside of the seam that you just have sewn. And this will allow you to open this up and create kind of this corner here, okay? You're gonna do this step to all four corners of your Fabric D rectangle. And then you'll actually just continue and do that same process to all of your Fabric D rectangles. So let me show you what that looks like. To sew the Fabric C square to the Fabric D triangle, you're gonna face right sides together and sew from outside corner to outside corner. You'll repeat that step all four corners. What I like to do is go ahead and pull these off, go ahead and cut them, press open, so I have plenty of room to do these other two corners. So here we are, and I'll just cut a quarter inch away from there. Like that, and like that, so that I don't go back and forth a bunch of times. 
I will use just my fingers to finger press this seam open. I won't push or pull the fabric because I don't want to stretch that out. So I'll just kind of push that here. And then grab another fabric C square and attach it to the other side. And repeat the process on the other side. And finger press these open as well. So here's what your rectangle should look like. These have the cutest little teacups and cakes and just I love this Alice in Wonderland fabric. It's absolutely adorable. So this is what your block will look like when you've got all four corners um, sewn and pressed open. I'll show you. So here's my seam allowance here and I just press that open and so I've got all four there. So you'll want to place this unit just to the side. We're going to assemble our main block in three different units. And what that means is that we are going to take this and do one, two, three different units. So let's scoot these two units out of the way. You'll take one of your fabric D rectangles. So a fabric D rectangle to one end, turn it around and sew a fabric B rectangle to the other end. This is going to make just one long strip unit here. You will need to make um, 22 of these specific units. Now the middle of our block just consists of two fabric D rectangles sewn together in the middle. The other side of our block is one of those 22 units that I said to make which is two fabric B with a fabric D new unit. So once you sew those together in long strips, now for your main block, you'll take two of these units, one of your center units, and then another of these units, and this will create your entire block. Definitely refer to your patterns and instructions for a little more clarity. So here's what your block should look like. It's definitely gotten a little bit smaller because of our quarter inch seam allowances. This allowed us to kind of shrink up this a little bit more. So you've got one, two, three, four fabric D units, and then you've got your fabric E units here on the ends. So this is our large haberdashery block. Scoot that to the side. Next, we are going to be assembling the small haberdashery block. And what this consists of is one of your fabric D units with your four fabric C squares attached. Now your fabric A pieces. And what we do with these is for every one fabric D unit, you're going to sew a fabric A on either side. Now these, you only need two small haberdashery blocks and so this, this goes together really, really simply. So you're just going to go over to your sewing machine and sew these two together and sew these two together as well. So let's head on over to the sewing machine and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna assemble that. Sewing this small haberdashery block is actually really simple. So like I said before, you just need one of your fabric D rectangles and you'll need two of your fabric A. We're gonna sew a fabric A onto either side, which is really, really simple. Because you only need two of these, it's really simple just to chain piece these and I'll show you how to do that. What that means is you're just gonna start at the very beginning of your first block and not break thread until you're all the way done sewing your blocks together. Now we'll head over to the ironing board and we'll press these seams open and that will give us our small haberdashery block. Let's head back over to the cutting mat after I've pressed these open and I'll show you how to arrange your entire table runner. It's very, very simple, very quick. The blocks go together really well because they're rather large. 
So after all of that sewing and pressing, you should have 11 of your large haberdashery blocks and two of your smaller haberdashery blocks. These are absolutely adorable and are just coming together so, so cute. Right, so for your outside rows of your table runner, a table runner is typically three rows. For your two outside ones, you'll want four of your large haberdashery blocks. And you're gonna sew these right in a line. So like this one would connect to this one just like this. And you're gonna have four of those blocks. But for the inside row, you're gonna shift them down just a tad. So you'll need three of your large haberdashery blocks, but then this is where you'll use your small blocks. And what you'll do is you will start and end your, your middle row with these smaller blocks. So you'll start with this one, then you'll put three of your large blocks and then end with this one. Let's head over to the sewing machine and I'll try and make this a little more clear. For our two outside rows, you'll just take four of your large blocks and we'll sew those together in a strip. So you're gonna sew them from the top here and then just keep adding. You'll want to keep this quilt pretty scrappy and so don't put too much thought into where each strip is gonna go. You do want to match up your seams and so we've got these two seams here you'll want to make sure those line up and that way your points here line up nice and straight So that's your first row. For your last row, you'll do the exact same process. But for the middle row, you remember you start and you end with your smaller blocks. So let me show you that. Here I've got a large haberdashery block and then a small one as well. I will line up the seams and I'll sew those. Here is our third large block. So this is the end of our strip. We will lastly add on our small block here. Now that I have all three of my rows sewn together, this has made the most darling table runner. It's going to look absolutely perfect on our table for our summer tea parties. I love the bright colors and the dark colors and the vibrant reds. It just turned out so lovely. I absolutely love it. You're going to finish with a table runner that should be about 32 by 60 and a half. It's a really good size table cover. The next part of this is figuring out how I'm going to do the quilting. So I think I'll actually take the weekend, quilt this up, and we'll post some pictures on Instagram and our blog. So make sure you check out our finished project. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial today. Comment any questions that you have down below and we'll be happy to get back with you. Thanks so much, have a great week.